What's going on, guys? Welcome back. I have a pretty exciting video here today, a massive day for me, biggest trading day of 2024, and going on probably the biggest month that I have ever had trading today, up over $14,000 realized. This is majority of my NVIDIA swing trade that I talked about over the last two days here on this channel, and this is also some SPX put option trades that I took later today. I'm going to go ahead and break down the best I can pretty much my entire day. We'll talk about NVIDIA again quickly because I'm not going to just keep beating a dead horse here. You guys know why I was in NVIDIA. You know why I was swing trading it. I made it very clear over the last two days. After we talk about NVIDIA, I will go into the SPX trades. I will talk about why I entered the SPX trades, what I was looking for. And this goes back to what we talked about in some previous videos, those gap fills those pre-market gap ups that we have been seeing on the market and the market to pull back and fill that gap. Now today, we had a gap and go. So we did not fill that gap early morning. And this got me interested in the potential of a late day downside move to fill that SPY SPX gap. And this is pretty much exactly what happened. And I nailed that downside on SPX for some really nice profits. So I have an NVIDIA. I have some SPX. I have some live trades to share with you at the end of the video. I'll break down everything. We'll go into the broker. We'll go into Tradezilla. I hope you guys enjoy it. Let's go ahead and jump right in. All right, guys. So I know a big day brings the doubts, right? I know this is what happens when you watch people online. I understand it, but we're going to go ahead and just log in, log in live to my broker. So right here, you can see my trader workstation, little icon there on my desktop. We can watch the interactive brokers open up. You can see that we're going to go ahead and log into live trading, not paper trading, live trading. We'll go ahead and use my account to sign in. Go ahead and put in my password. Interactive Brokers needs my face. Let's go ahead and give it to him. There we go. And now we can watch the broker log in. All of us live to watch. And we can look at the day that we had today. Pretty massive day, guys. My biggest day of the, of the year. One of my biggest days pretty much ever, right? I've had a few, I probably think this might be number five. I had, I think, four or five, five-figure days, today being one of them. Um, pretty awesome. So Interactive Brokers is logging in. Uh, you can see that right here. We'll wait for it all to populate, and then we will jump into the live trades, or we'll jump into the trades. We'll break down everything here. So there you go, guys. Uh, $14,200 realized, 11989 on the day, 13% of the account. And the account is up to $98,800, so we're almost at that $100,000 mark. Now, I don't know if I really want to push another $2,000, so I'm considering a withdrawal here. I'll probably withdraw tomorrow um, after the trading day because I am not. I will not be trading on Friday. I will be traveling. So tomorrow is probably the withdrawal day for me. We'll get that last trading day out of the week, and then we will withdraw the profits out of this account. Probably going to go ahead and reset this back to 50,000. That's my goal right now. I don't need more than 50,000 to trade and I want to make sure I manage, right, my size. I make sure I take profits out of the market and this is going to be the best way for me to do it. So, that is the, this is my account. You can see it all right here. 4,000 on Nvidia, 37 XP, 3700 SPX, 2200 SPX, so together about 6,000 on SPX today. 900 on on Snow, swing trade on SPY which we talked about. Uh, this was straight from the, the community, so I can go to the swing trade section of our Discord. Uh, and this was right here. So right here, we can see going to hold SPY January 26th, 484 calls. This is back on Monday of this week. Closed these up for 100% today. Uh, we also closed the Microsoft swing trade that was right here. Let me go ahead and find it right here. Microsoft 395 calls. That was something we opened on last week, actually. Closed that up about 100% today. Um, and then the other swing trade that we closed up today was NVIDIA. So Microsoft was a good one. Um, we had a nice little SPY one. NVIDIA was a big one there as well. And I still continue to maintain uh, Shopify. So that is that. That is the update on the swings. That's the update on my account. That's my broker for you to see. Now let's go ahead and minimize that. And let's pull up Tradezilla. All right, guys. So here is Tradezilla, and we have officially crossed the uh, the fifty thousand dollar mark on the month. Uh, Fifty one thousand four hundred and fifty seven dollars on the month. Two point eight profit factor, sixty six percent win rate, one point four six average win to loss trade. And you can see today being one of the biggest days. Fourteen thousand there. 
I'll go ahead and move my face here so you can see the calendar there. Um, started the month really good. Had a few really small losing days. Uh, and then pretty much since then, man, you guys have seen me log into my broker every single day. You've seen these trades live. Um, and so there it is. Uh, that's, that's the month. Today being the largest one. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and now break it down. Let's go into today's trading day. I'm going to go ahead and move my face back over so that we can relook and look at everything that happened today. So the day started with me closing some swing trades. Number one was Microsoft Spy. Had a nice swing on those. 81% Spy, 80% Microsoft. Um, still holding shop. NVIDIA, this was the big swing trade that I talked about in yesterday's video. I closed that up today. This could have been massive, uh, but I wanted to take profits on it, and I'm not upset about it. Uh, Snow was a, tr a day trade today. Snow and Meta were two day trades from today, which we will have live trades for you guys to see. Um, and then you can see the SPX trades at the end of the day, one of them being a 52% gain and the other one being a 162% gain. So let's start today's video with let's knock NVIDIA out, right? Let's take a look at NVIDIA. Let's close that trade up. Let's put it in the books. And then we're going to really dive deep into my mentality on the SPY and we'll break down those SPX trades. So here's NVIDIA. I'll go ahead and pop this up. Uh, you guys can see right here. We talked about the entries yesterday in yesterday's video, right? You guys saw this in yesterday's video. And basically all day I was just scaling out of this trade, okay? And that was pretty much it. Just scaling out all day. I took no entries on NVIDIA today. It was fully taking profits on the push higher. Now, I want to go over why I was wanting or why I was interested or I guess what was the reason that I was taking profits on NVIDIA relatively early. There was a reason why I was taking profits on NVIDIA relatively early and why, in you know, in hindsight, I do miss out on some profits. So coming into today, I was very focused on $602 a share. That was this high here, right? That was this high here, this high here, and that was the previous day highs, right? We closed and rejected around 602. The after hours stopped trading at around 602 per share. So today we had a gap up, right? We had a gap up and I was looking for us to push into 602 and rally to the upside, which we ended up getting. And you guys can see right here where I was scaling out right onto the push. We got exactly what I was looking for. Now, there was one thing that I spotted early morning that got me a little bit uneasy, right? And I'll show you why I was sort of taking majority of the profits pretty close to open uh, and that is right here. So guys, if we look at the open on NVIDIA, we can see that this little area gave me a little bit of uncertainty, right? And so this is our 602 level and we were seeing a lot of wick rejections at that 602. So I was a little concerned there, right? I was looking at this, I was holding my large position. I was up a very nice profit and I was thinking to myself, hey, let's not give this back, right? My goal here, let's not give this back. I'm starting to see these wick rejections coming in at my level that I wanted to see hold, right? And we can see here on the chart, we're starting to see us reject that level. So I was getting a little bit uncertain, right? And I was sort of scaling out, taking some profits and locking some in. Now, I will be 100% transparent as I always am, right? I was in a little bit more size than I typically am comfortable with, right? And this is a really good thing to sort of go over here. I was in 15 contracts of the 600 calls, and this was about a $15,000 position size coming into overnight, coming into the next trading day. It's pretty large, right? And definitely a little bit above my comfort range. So this definitely, now that I look back at it, caused me to do some decisions that maybe I didn't want to do, right? I look back at this and say, hey, if you were in a more comfortable position here, if you were maybe in a little bit less size here, then you probably would have held and let this go. And I can, uh, I can attest to that because after I exited some early morning, I was much more comfortable, right? I was exiting about, uh, what is that, about 10 contracts. I took 10 contracts off pretty much 10 minutes after open. And after I took those 10 off, I felt my emotions decrease. I felt more comfortable because I took that risk off the table. And after I was taking that risk off, that's when I was able to look at it more comfortably, let it move, right? And then you can see, ultimately, NVIDIA just squeezes straight to the upside. So a good example, guys, of being able to understand where your limits are, 
right? Understand that you, if you start pushing limitations in your trading, you're going to cause some emotions and possibly take some wrong decisions. It's always right to stay in your comfort zone. That's what I did here. I have no regrets about selling it, right? Of course, I wish I didn't because of the money and how much I could have made. I think at the peak, I would have been up about $40,000. But I, but I have, I don't believe that I would have held that whole time, right? I know I stay true to myself, and I know, looking back at this, there was no way I was going to be holding full size all the way to the highs of Nvidia today. So, that's an unrealistic target. It's not a target that I think is healthy to have in your mind when trading. Take your profits, lock it in, right, as you get your move, and that's pretty much what I did, and I locked in along the way higher. So that trade's done. Trade's complete. Overall, it was an $8,700 trade, a 50% gain, uh, and that is NVIDIA. So with NVIDIA out of the way, let's jump into the SPX, the SPY analysis, and why and what I was looking for towards end of day today. So guys, it was around 12 o'clock, right? We were approaching the bond auction that we were having at 1 o'clock today, and I was starting to notice something here on the SPX, on the SPY. Also, I was paying very close attention to the VIX as well as the 10-year, the 10-year treasury. And so today, we saw pretty much, and I'll go back to this chat here in just a second. We saw here on the SPX a gap up, right? And we've talked about this SPX gap up previously right here, right? This gap up right here, which filled right over the day, you know, over that Monday. We had a push higher and a rejection into that gap fill level. And so today looked very similar, right? We had that gap up, which we never quite filled and continued higher intraday, right? You can see that move higher, sort of that gap and go move. So I noticed sort of around 12 o'clock into that one o'clock bond auction that we had not yet filled that gap and that there could be a potential for a gap fill later on in the day, right? Maybe on that bond auction, right? That was my potential trigger for that gap fill to start was that one o'clock bond auction. Also, that rising VIX and that rising 10 year. So right here in the chat, guys, you can see I was uh, some people were asking me about where do I think the SPX, the SPY could go. And I was talking to the group saying I'm sort of in the boat of the SPX filling the gap before we get more aggressive upside. This was around 1218 p.m. today. And this was what the chart was looking like. I was interested in that SPX to potentially reject that 4900 and look for that gap fill back to 4870. This was a very big interest of mine and a very potential opportunity that I wanted to take advantage of. So you can see here around 1223, I was alerting the group that there is a treasury auction coming up the two year and the five year at 1 p.m. and that we need to be cautious of this potential rejection of this bond auction. This could be something that triggers the market either much higher or lower but I was staying a little bit on the short side bias due to that gap fill that was still necessary, in my opinion, on the SPX. So this was around 118 and I was updating the group that the gap fill move might be here. We might be starting to see it. We saw that rejection come in near that 4900 after that treasury auction came out. And we started to see something that you need to pay attention to here. If I go to the TNX, around that time, we had a gap up on the 10 year and we really continued that move, this leading to a lot of weakness on the market. And something that I was focusing on pretty much the entire day was that as the market moved higher, the VIX was increasing as well. This was sort of something I was worried about, right? This was sort of giving me some uneasy vibes um, about the move higher, that gap fill potential, the treasury auction at one o'clock, the 10 year moving higher, and that VIX, all these things sort of combined was why I was starting to get interested in taking SPX puts. So here, guys, is the first SPX trade. You can see I was sort of scaling into this position as we were moving higher, starting at around 11.30, 12 o'clock. As we approached that bond auction, I had a max, max risk of $2,500 on this trade. This is where I was going to either cut it for a loss or see if this would work out. I was up about $6,800 on the day. And I was willing to go down to around that $5,000, $4,500 profit on the day. I was willing basically to give back some profits, right? And I don't care if you think this is a good idea or not. This is something I do, okay? And I'm just here telling you how I do things. So I was up a lot on the day. And I said, okay, I like this idea. I'm very interested here, right? This is definitely something I think has potential. 
and I'm okay giving back some profits. If I have to give back some profits to potentially make a lot more, that's all, that's, that's what trading is, right? That's risk reward. And that's what I was looking to do. So when I'm up a lot on the day already from the Nvidia swing trade, I get a little bit aggressive, right? I say, okay, I got some, some house money here. What can I start to look for? What can I get possibly a little bit aggressive on to sort of increase the profits that I have on the day? And this was my go-to. So I was scaling it to SPX puts here as we moved higher with my ultimate idea for us to reject this 4,900 area. We got a little bit above 4,900, but I'll tell you right now, this is what kept me in the trade. And I will show you this. This is exactly what kept me in the trade. And it was the ES. The ES popped above that, that 4930 area for just a few minutes, but never quite got any strength, right? So I was sort of watching this ES high, which we were we popped above temporarily. And then after that bond auction, we got that quick drop. And after seeing that drop back below that ES high, and after seeing that drop back below 4,900 on the SPX, that's when I knew that what I was in could potentially start working here. So you can see how I traded this, sort of how I scale into my positions. This is very routine with what you have seen on this channel. I scale into my positions, always having that ultimate stop where I'm going to accept that I'm wrong, but I never felt like I was wrong here. And after that bond auction is when that move really started to trigger. If that bond auction pushed us higher, that TNX dropped, that's when I would have known, hey, your thesis is incorrect. Cut this trade. Get out of it. Got a really nice, quick, aggressive move to the downside. You can see the trade went from around uh, went from around a dollar twenty-five. I was sort of adding a dollar eighty-five, a dollar fifteen. I was adding some around the sixty-five cent mark, and I was getting fully out around that two fifteen area. I'll zoom in here for you to see that my full out was around that two fifteen area. And that was my profit taking for about $2,200. I wanted to take it off. It's a very good profit. I was very happy to take that and take that trade off. Of course, in hindsight, you can see could have been a lot more, but I understand that I'm never going to catch a full drop. It's just not the trader I am. And I look for those quick moves and quick aggressive profits. I take them. I move on. I look for the next opportunity. Now, the next XP SPX trade, which was even cleaner here and actually a really good trade uh, looking back at it. This was a textbook, 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 break and retest rejection later day on the SPX. So you can see later day, I was doing the same thing, sort of scaling into some, uh, some SPX 4870s. I was in some around 175, 60 cents, 50 cents. My exits were 170, 240, 240, or 225, 230, 235. This was about a 100 and uh, this was a 162 percent profit. Why did I take this late day? Let me go ahead and show you here on the technicals. So, guys, here in the Discord around 256, I was posting this SPX chart. You can see right here. What does this look like? This looks like a break and retest to me, right? Previous lows, break and retest, right, right here. Previous lows, break, retest, and I was all over this for a rejection. This was what I was watching, and I was sort of updating the group with what I was looking at there. If I go to the SPX, you can see right here, we had that low that sort of held 48.85. We went ahead, we had a little bit of a pop, but ultimately flushed under that level. I didn't catch this flush, so what did I do? I waited for that bounce. I waited for the SPX to come back into that previous low and look at that wick rejection right there at that 48.85. This is when I was starting to get aggressive on this short. I'll go back to TradeZella for you to see the entries, right? We got a pop into that 4885. I started to get very aggressive on the entries there, and I took my profits as we had this flush to the downside. You were seeing this break and retest across the board, and the one that got me really interested was actually on the QQQ. If you look at the QQQ here, and you notice this level right here, this around this 427.50, look at this level right here. You can see we had that opening high at 427.50, we had that intraday low at 427.50, right? We had this low right here at 427.50, and look at the late day rejection right there at 427.50. That 427.50 was huge today. You can see right on this chart how many times that level was reacted or how, how many times it was respected. We had that high come in, which presented a beautiful break and retest long intraday. Then we had that previous low right here, right? 
we had it hold sort of later day on this drop. Ultimately, it flushed below. And after flushing below right here, you came back up into these previous lows right there. And look at that break and retest rejection. After seeing that on the queues, I started to have a lot more confidence on my SPX, right? Because I was monitoring both. And I was seeing SPX pretty much doing the same thing. Previous lows, break and retest rejection. And you can see that's where I started to get very aggressive on this trade, right? Taking profits into the drop for about a 162% profit. So guys, those three trades really accounted for majority of my wins today. The SPX, the NVIDIA, those were the big boys. Those were the trades we just talked about. Very, very clean trades to see there today. I have Snow and I have Meta recorded live. So I'm going to go ahead and run that live recording for you guys to see. So guys, obviously a pretty massive day for me and something I need to make sure I manage, right? I need to make sure I take some profits out, withdraw some money, make sure my ego stays low, make sure my head stays low, and I continue to do what I do, right? No matter how much I grow, no matter how much money I make, we have to keep the strategy the same and we can't get too aggressive, right? We get too aggressive, we take too much size, we could get into a comfort zone that we're not really performing with, right? A uncomfortable zone in our trading and that is going to cause problems so gonna do a withdraw probably tomorrow I'll record it live for you guys to see maybe we'll even do it on a live stream next week those are my trades today if you guys want to trade live with me every day link down below there is a 10% discount right now for you guys signing up if you want to check it out it's down in the description below you'll also see that pop up on your screen with the coupon code to use enjoy the live trades Thanks for all the support. I hope you guys had a great day as well, and I hope to see you in the next one. Peace. I am interested in that little snow uh, 206 hold. That's probably my top watch right now. Yeah, I'm going to take a long on snow here, guys. 210 calls on snow. Stop under 206. That's a perfect pullback to our 206 level. Why not? Okay, so definitely some rejections on NVIDIA at 602 to be aware of if you are looking at that one. I'm actually going to take some profits on NVIDIA right there as it pushes in the 602. So getting a little bit off NVIDIA there, de-risking a tad there. Snow looks very good, up 15%. Going to try to let snow work out, man. It looks good. I think we got a really good entry there. I might add to snow here, actually. Yeah, I'm going to add to snow right there. Stop is still under 206. Let's see. It's start. You're starting to see these bottom wicks on Meta. See those bottom wicks coming in? If you take an entry here, though, you have to understand that it could pull back a little bit more. That's actually what I'm going to do. I'm going to take five contracts here, and then if, if meta breaks down a little bit more, I'll look to add into it. To me, that looks like it could be, it could be setting up a little flag here into that Monday high and into that previous high as well. Okay, nice squeeze on meta there. Let's see if I can get a little bit more continuation to take some profits off. Nice. Okay. Good. Perfect. Okay, I'm going to take half off there, up 10%. Meta new highs. Boom, baby. Beautiful meta. Beautiful. Snow. Let it bake. Let it bake. Patience. This is patience time. Very nice. Very nice, guys. Snow, meta, two trades we took today worked out beautifully. Spy swing trade from this week up 100%. NVIDIA, I mean, NVIDIA is NVIDIA. Shopify from yesterday up 12%.